Right. Hopefully, if I haven't messed things up, I should have Roz on the line. Welcome to Community Link Show, Roz. Hi. Hi. You're still there. I, I am known for anything technical. <laughs> Carol will get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. So, Roz, we... Mm. Um, We've been promoting for you the mm. awards event. Is, is it something that's done annually? Um, it's biannually. So at the moment, we're doing it every two years. So, um, so the, the first one started in 2017. And that's by yourself, yeah? You yes, yes, I started it. Yeah. So what made you do this? Ah, oh, gosh. <laughs> well, um, I always I always wanted to, to work with women. Um, I... From being a child, I always marveled at the way women coped with everything that was thrown at them in their lives. And, uh, you know, my family came over from the Caribbean in the, in the 50s and 60s, and uh, we settled in the north of England. And so that experience of being brought up in the north of England, where I guess there weren't so many people of colour at that time... Um, and, you know, our family obviously went through a few trials and tribulations. But um, I do feel that uh, I also met a lot of very gritty northern women as well mm. who, you know, demonstrated a, a resilience that, um, I, I, you know, that you rarely see anywhere else. So, and, and I look at my own mother's uh, struggles, for, for example. You know, she, she came from the Caribbean um, she had eight children, um, but and she also, you know, we had domestic violence in our house for a number of years, and she, but she always managed to keep us all together. She always managed to keep a roof over our heads. She always made things seem not that bad, mm. and she always tried to make sure that, um, particularly the girls, that we went to college, we got educated, and we were financially educated as well. Um, so I yeah so I, I always feel that women um, have always had that extra layer on top of the the usual struggles that everybody has in life. Because it's like um, sometimes when they, you see women and they say you know what do you do for a living and they yeah. say you know we're a housewife and a mother and it's like shrugged off isn't it? But yeah it's, exactly. It's, but it, it actually is the, probably the most important job you'll ever do. Well, this is it. This is mm. it because you know especially mothers you've got another life that you're teaching. Mm. But, um, so that so you lived up north, so, but now you're in London. Yes, now I've lived in London for many years, for about thirty years, and um, I started my career working in local government, and so I did that for about twenty years. And I was started off as a community worker, so I was doing a lot of support for communities who wanted to get projects off the ground, mm. for example. And what I noticed was with the women, um, they they sort of bore the brunt of um, if there was a lot of poverty in that area, they kind of bore, bore the brunt of it and all the inequalities that were around. And I felt that once they got a little bit of support and guidance, they were able to actually uh, create projects that not only benefited them, but actually benefited the whole community. And so hence um, the this award scheme mm. now, I take it. So Yeah, so... so yeah, so so, and when I started to think about once I left uh, local government, I left local government in 2010, and once I left local government, I always thought about some of the great women, the very strong women that I met who actually set up projects. You know, despite all the odds, they overcame lots of different adversities, and some a lot of the projects that they started actually ki were very sustainable, and they mm -hmm. kept going, and uh, they were very low cost. And so I just felt that if this could happen in the small area of London that I was working in, surely this could happen all over the UK. So you sort and of answered my next question, because obviously we mm. are doing it down here, but people might be thinking, oh, you know, the the, um, the event is in London, it's mm. going to be London people, we've got no chance. So what would you say to people like that? Well, I'd say um, one one of our winners last year um, came from Manchester, um, and people was uh, women. A woman was shortlisted from Sheffield. So, I wouldn't say just because you live outside London, you don't have a chance. This is an award for everybody. Everyone has an equal chance to win an award. So, um, I wouldn't say just because you you don't live in London, you don't have a chance. It's it, the award is in London because I I live in London. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
yeah, yeah. So um, it's it's just it's a national award, and in fact, um, what shocked me was the first year that we held the awards, we got. Um, 140 nominations from five different countries. Oh, so outside of <laughs> the UK altogether. <laughs> yeah. So as well as getting nominations from the UK, we got nominations from from different countries. Is this because you you put it out there that yeah. far? Right. Yeah, because it's on social media, so and that you know, and that's international. So it was in you know we got uh, women from um, USA, uh, Canada, uh, Africa, um, India. Um, and you know, <laughs> so, as well. So taking it taking it back to when yeah. you, you you thought about the, the concept and you put it out there. Yes. Were you thinking that far? You know, did it just happen? So or when no, you? <laughs> no, I, I I didn't think it was going to be that far and wide at all. I just thought it was going to be a really small event. Hence why we had a quite a small room. Mm. Um, and then what we found out was obviously the the event sold out two weeks before, um, and. You know, we were trying to squeeze um, people in, oh, so no. it, it, it it did become the hottest ticket in town. Uh, so I I have made sure that this year we we've got a bigger venue. <laughs> <laughs> and is it just uh, aimed at women of color or right across no, the board? It's it's right across the board. Uh, it, and and in fact, that is uh, we got a lot of feedback because we did a feedback form mm -hmm. at the end of the event. And we got a lot of feedback from people saying what they absolutely loved about the event was that it was very multicultural and there were people from all over. So it's not just for women of colour, although I do feel that women of colour do need to be reflected more um, in these awards. I mean, I've, I have my own business and I, I go to a lot of awards. I go, you know, I've seen a lot of business type awards um, and I don't see a lot of women of colour um, be, being nominated or, or winning so this is a great opportunity for women of colour because obviously we're going to look at just because that's well, my background we are going to attract uh, uh, people of colour but it absolutely goes across the board and, and that's one of the things that a lot of people did say was that they loved the fact that it was a great mix of people mm. um, you know that came, we had, we had English, we had Irish, we had Eastern European, we had African, we had Caribbean, you know, we had Asian women, we had women, just women, amazing women. The room was just full of amazing women. You know, you say um, lack of rep representation from uh, women of colour. Do you think it's, it's a cultural thing where people don't understand or just can't, you know, pick up a form and complete? Because a lot of these things is someone to nominate someone. And, yes. um, do you think it's something to do with that? Well, it could be a bit of both. I mean, it could be that the fact that people aren't nominating people because they probably think, oh, they're not going to win anyway. Mm -hmm. But also you need to look at the criteria and look at what, what the criteria is for them winning these awards. And if it's if it's a, an industry award or a business award, you know, they may not be at that level where where they can win an award or they just might not be in the right arena for them for them to be noticed, you know. Um, I mean, I could go on forever about yeah, the glass ceiling and, it, um, you know, opportunities you <laughs> that are available. But, you know, we, we just want to concentrate on the awards today. But, yeah, there, there are a lot, a lot of things that women do have to go through in the workplace in order to get, you know, where they need to be and where they want to be. But can I just get you, because obviously mm. um, I have to watch the time as well, categories. Um, yes. Obviously there's different categories and, yes. and like you say, criteria. So yes. can you tell us what you're looking for, your categories or criteria? Yes, so I'll just I'll just talk you through the the, the five different categories mm -hmm. first of all, and then I'll talk about the criteria. So the first category is the amazing young woman, and that would be a woman age eighteen to thirty. The second category is women in business, and again that would be somebody who's perhaps runs a business that you know it doesn't have to be a multi million pound business, but they're running a business, but actually they're doing something on top of that that's over and above you know, what, what they usually do. Or maybe they've come across some adversity in some way and they're still running a business despite of it. So, and you've got Amazing Woman, which again is very open. That's a very open and wide category. Um, and then you've got Amazing Mum. I wanted to put that in there because I do feel that quite a lot of these awards, again, you, you know, we don't actually see specific characters, uh, categories for mums necessarily 
um, in, in the different awards that I've been to. Um, and then the final uh, category is lifetime achievement, which would be somebody who's perhaps more towards the end of their career. Maybe they what they've been doing, uh, they've been doing it for a, quite a long time. They've had a lot of experience. Maybe they've been, you know, running a project or running a charity or running a business for maybe 10 years or more. And, you know, they haven't been recognized throughout their lifetime. So we want to give a lifetime achievement award. It doesn't have to be somebody who's over 60 There's, we, we just deliberately haven't put an age limit on that mm -hmm. but it's just somebody who perhaps has been doing something for maybe 10 years or more and they haven't been recognised for it because I note as well um, go back um on the information I was giving, one of the things it does say, it's, it's aimed at people who have not received an accolade or an, or an award in the past. Yes. So you really yes. are looking for people that, um, unsung heroes is the word yes. I'm looking for. Yes. So, yeah, so th that's, that's the absolute um, perfect word for it. So it's, it's unsung heroines and it's for all those women that have been sort of tirelessly working away in the background that perhaps otherwise have gone unnoticed. Um, but I, what I've found is that those type of women, a lot of the time, they are making a huge difference to society and impacting on the community, but no one knows about it. Um, and quite often they're working on a very small budget or no budget at all. Um, but they're just, they've just got this tenacity, they've just got this drive, they've got this ambition, they've got this enthusiasm to help others. Um, so I'm just trying to shine a light on that kind of work, really. Um, and that's not to say that... An, the award wouldn't be given to somebody who's actually won an award before. If they've won one award before, we're not going to not give them this award if we feel that, um, you know, they they deserve it. Mm. However, we are looking at women who have not been recognised that, that much for what they're doing. Yeah. And so we've got the categories. So a yes. quick um, um, criteria. We've got two minutes now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so the criteria is is basically, um, you know, someone who's triumphed over adversity, um, somebody who's doing something outside of the box, somebody who's coping with a disadvantage in some way, somebody who's impacting on their community, somebody who's making a difference. It could be your mother, your partner, your cousin, your best friend, your neighbour. It could be a mum at the school gates. It could be a volunteer at your local charity. It could be the lady in the shop down the road. I, I'm looking for ordinary women who are just doing extraordinary things that nobody knows about. And this year, can I just say, this year um, I feel quite lucky because we have got a sponsor. We've got our, our main sponsor is Give As You Live and, and they're a, an online platform that helps raise money for charities and they've raised about 10 million okay. um, for, for charities so far. And they also work with retailers. Um, they work with about 4,000 retailers in order for, for us, the consumer, to buy things online and then a percentage of that goes towards their chosen charity. So I'm really, really um, excited to have Give As You Live on board. And we've also got Angie Greaves um, on board, who's a very um, well-experienced radio presenter, and she's going to be our host this year. So, yeah, I feel like I'm quite excited um, at what we've achieved in such a small space of time. We've so, only done this once before. Okay, so, so this is mm. your second one. So the most important information mm. that you can give up, you know, we've yes. been talking for 15 minutes, but yes. this is the most important <laughs> bit. If they want to nominate someone, how do they go about it? Right, they can nominate someone by going on my website, amazingwomenglobal.com forward slash nominations. Alternatively, they can go on my Facebook page, Amazing Women Global, and they can contact me on there and I'll, I'll send them a link. And... Um, if they want to, to know a bit any more, because I said, even though we've been on for 50 minutes, someone might have a question that I didn't ask. Have you an email you can give out? Yeah, my email is Roz, that's R-O-Z, at amazingwomenglobal.com. Okay, and the closing date again is? The closing date for nominations is the 19th of January. That's next week. Well, yeah. this week, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Boom. my gosh, time's flying. <laughs> Time's fine, but tickets are still on sale. Mm -hmm. So again, people could contact me if they want to have a day out in London, make a day of it. It's Mother's Day the next day. Okay. <laughs> so if people want to come down, we're going to be having the award over afternoon tea right. in a very prestigious part of London. So the tickets are still on sale, and they can grab their early bird tickets until the twenty second of February. I tell you what, because um, I know. Um 
we got contact through um St. Evadne Campbell um, yeah. and she's from Gloucester. And yeah. I had to laugh when I read it, the procedure Millennium Gloucester Hotel. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, see, we've got that connection already. <laughs> anyway, Ross, I gotta say um, thank you. Yes. For that and hopefully um, we'll get some nominations from yes. the south west of England up to you. And thank you, Carol, for having me. That's it's been right. a pleasure. You take care. All right. Thank you. Bye.